Okay, how's that? So far, no reverberation, we'll find out. All right, so listening to Eros's comments, it became clear that I'm going to say essentially the same thing, but in a slightly different way. Um, okay, so just an overview of what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus similarly on names and utterances. And just as background, I'll just say I've already drunk the Perry Kool Aid. So I've adapted John's account of Notion Networks to uh, deal with some problems with fiction, empty names, what I call co-identification, the fact that we can think and talk about the same things even though they don't exist. And I've defended an account that relies heavily on the idea of notions and information. Okay. But I have some worries about this account, um, which is a tension, which is essentially a tension between what I was described as the Kripkean and the Donellan kinds of points of view um, between names as devices for co-reference, co-identification, what Kepa and John call co-co-identification, conditional, oh, co-co-reference, conditional co-reference with other people, and names as a device for talking about what we have in mind. Okay, so that's the tension I want to talk about, and I'm going to get at it by just raising some worries for the way that John describes SO roles. Okay, so this is just a Quick recap, you've already heard this, I'll be really quick. So, SO roles um, are used to explain the idea that reference to an object depends on a role the object plays in my life at the time of the utterance. So, they're partial functions that take the subject and time of an utterance or thought as arguments and deliver the object referred to or thought about. All right, so, John already put some of these on the board. I'll be focusing on names, so I'll be focusing on something like the SO role for Perry's use of the name Aristotle, which we can, uh, we can formalize in this way. So multipropositionalism or pluripropositionalism, as Eros called it, gives us this idea that there are different Ionist conditions. So imagine that John says Aristotle is Greek. I had imagery with the mole thing, so I decided not to do that one. Um, at time T, so the O content, right, it's just, as Perry puts it in the paper, the set of worlds in which Aristotle is Greek. I'll ignore the, the tense. Okay. The S content is what the world must be like for the utterance to be true, given the representation subject in time. Okay. So the set of worlds in which there is an X, such that X is the value right, of this S O role, Aristotle for John at a certain time, and X was Greek. Okay, so. In virtue of what does this SO role determine Aristotle, the philosopher, as its value, as opposed to, say, Aristotle's shipping magnet? And as John already said, name notion networks. Aristotle's the origin of the network, the fellow whose per fellow perceptions of and references to got it started. Okay. Now, in the paper, um, John, I think, really goes the Donellan way more in the paper. Um, and, in fact, that's the way I myself have advocated, and that's where the worries come from. As John puts it in the paper, what happens is there are these references to Aristotle, information is transmitted, right? I get a notion in my mind of Aristotle, right, which then determines the reference of the name. Okay. So the notion, and therefore the use of the name, refers to the philosopher insofar as it's linked through a name notion network that originates in that person. Okay, so why should we have S content? S content is supposed to explain cognitive significance. So two cases, when there are two co-referring expressions, so the O content is the same, right? Hesperus and Phosphorus, or I and John Perry to anticipate what John will talk about tomorrow. Or when there's an expression that lacks a reference, like Jacob Horn, so there's no O content. But whether or not S content can perform these roles is going to turn on how we understand the relationship between the SO roles and name notion networks. And this will come down to this tension that I'm concerned about. Okay, so just to get clear about the issues, the co-reference case, Bab, a Babylonian, says it T has versus phosphorus. This comes as a surprise to Bab's friends. All right, the O content is just the set of worlds in which Venus is Venus. That's not very informative. The S content is the set of worlds in which there's an X 
such that x is the value of the Hesperus role for BAB at t, and a y, such as y is the value of the, Hesperus, of the phosphorus role for BAB at t, and x is y. Okay? In other words, the two SO roles have the same value. That's the truth condition. Okay? And here's what John says. The name notion networks, and hence, the SO roles for Hesperus and phosphorus were quite different for the Babylonians. Right? The Hesperus network goes back to sightings of the evening star, Right, and the phosphorus never goes back to sightings of the morning star. It turns out they're the same. Babylonians didn't know that. The no reference case. So suppose Alan says Jacob Horn visited Boston. There's no O content because there's no reference for Jacob Horn. Okay. What's the S content? This is so annoying. The set of worlds in which the name notion network the speaker exploits that connects back with the diaries and the material that was published about them has an origin, and he visited Boston. This is the network that's blocked. So in other words, sorry about the horn there, um, it's the set of worlds in which there is an X such that X is the value of the Jacob Horn network, the Jacob Horn uh, role, and X visited Boston. Okay, so what exactly, I want to spell out these Einist conditions. So I've just said what, what John said today and in his paper. I want to spell out how exactly these conditions are supposed to work in the two cases. Okay, what's the set of worlds in which there's an X such that X is the value of the so rule and so on? Okay. Well, it looks like, and this is how it's interpreted in reference and reflexivity, that it's the set of worlds in which there's an X such as X is the origin of the Hesperus network, right? And there's a Y such that Y is the origin of the phosphorus network, right? And the two origins are one, right? They're the same. So that looks like that's the Einist condition that we're getting at with the S content. Okay. What about the INIS condition we're getting at with the S content for the statement concerning Jacob Horn? Well, it looks like it's the set of worlds in which there is an X, such as X is the origin of the Jacob Horn network, and X visited Boston. Okay, so that's how it looks like we should spell out these INIS conditions. And I want to raise some worries about that as a way of getting to the tension that I mentioned before. First question about the no reference case, right? How can there be worlds in which the Jacob Horn network originates in an actual person? Right? In what sense is it the same network? Okay, this is a worry that Mark Texter raises about Mark Sainsbury's use of name using practices, but it's a similar concern, right? So there's a question about the modal profile of a network. Okay. If the network originated in a real person, be loads of other people involved and thoughts and notions and utterances and so on preceding and perhaps going forward as well. Right? So it wouldn't be the same set of actual communications, clearly. Now, maybe we could, in, and this is a problem for, for me, not just for John, because I utilize this account. This is why I'm concerned. So maybe we could individuate networks by their starting points in the actual world, right? in some sense. So the Jacob Horn network is the network that started with a notion in the mind of William Horn, who, according to Wikipedia, is the one who is responsible for the Jacob Horn hoax. Okay. So the idea would be, in other worlds, William Horn's notion, which he just freely created, is actually the notion of a real person. So it's that network, the one that involves William Horn's notion. But of course, then we can ask, in virtue of what is it that notion, right? So, it depends on how you want to individuate notions. If you individuate notions, at least partly in virtue of their reference, then it can't be the same notion. Okay. Now, a solution to this problem is to abstract further away for a different content, okay, where we quantify over networks. And indeed, when John was describing it in the, in the talk, this is how he put it, actually. So a different S content of Jacob Horn visited Boston might be there's an X and a Y such that Y is the network in which Allen's Jacob Horn notion is embedded, and X is the origin of Y, and X visited Boston. Okay, so I think that is a little bit closer. We don't have to worry about how to individuate the network, right? But of course, we do again face the difficulty of individuating the notion one more time. But here it looks like, and maybe this is a different, I'm going to suggest that ES content actually plays more roles maybe than John 
thought in explaining these cases, it might help, right? Because it might be that we should individuate as the notion guiding that very utterance. Right? The x such that x is the notion guiding that very utterance or something. I'll say a little bit more about that when I discuss the co-reference problem. All right. So the co-reference situation, it looks like the Hesperus, uh, the value of the Hesperus role is the origin of the network. And the value of the phosphorus role is the origin of the phosphorus network. But it looks as if this doesn't really help with cognitive significance because they appear to be the same network. Right? Sightings of Venus. Venus is the origin of the two networks. Right? It looks like they're just one network. And indeed, there being one network is part of what helps to explain the sense in which we are co-referring. Now, of course, an obvious solution to this, implied by the way that John describes the case, is simply to deny that they're the same network. Right. Okay. And reasons to do that, well, given the no reference problem, it looks like we can't individuate networks by origin anyway, right? So the fact that they both started with sightings of Venus might be neither here nor there. The starting points are clearly different perceptions or notions. But then it seems to me that networks don't play the role they're supposed to play in explaining cocoa reference, right? Particularly in the case that I myself have worried about at length, in the empty case, when there is no object, right? It's fine if you have a referent and you have independent networks. Right. Your statements embedded in each network can co-refer in virtue of the fact that the origin is in fact the same. But it's not fine when you have no origin, no referent. Right? The sense in which we're all talking and thinking about the same thing looks like the sense in which we're embedded in the same network. So once you say they're different networks, you give up on the possibility, looks like, of explaining this kind of co-co-reference or identification. Okay. Or so it seems to me. So another solution is to distinguish branches of a network, right? which is something that John suggests in dealing with the Pierre case. Right? So Hesperus is the origin of sort of the Hesperus branch of the single network. Right? And phosphorus is the origin of the phosphorus branch of the single network. But again, I mean, if, if those were the so, SO roles, if that is how you understood SO roles, I call them SO roles in my head. I'm just going to keep doing that. I realize. That could lead to confusion if you call the other kind S roles, but all right. Um, I think it still makes it mysterious the sense in which these roles are supposed to help with the case in which we're all referring to the same thing. OK. So here is an alternative solution. We can quantify over networks again in the way that we did with the no reference case. Right? So we can say there's a W, X, Y, and Z such that W is the network in which Babs phosphorus notion is embedded. X is the origin of W. Y is the network in which Babs Hesperus notion is embedded. Z is the origin of Y, and X is Z. Right? And this might get us closer to the kind of cognitive significance that we're aiming at. Okay. My worry is that Bab, being the person uttering this sentence, has only one notion. So her phosphorus notion and her Hesperus notion are just the same notion. So once again, we're saying something no more cognitively significant than Venus is Venus. We're saying the origin of this notion is identical to the origin of the same notion, okay, which doesn't look very significant. Perhaps, then, we need to move to a kind of e-content. Okay. So, and it gets, it gets quite complicated at this stage. Right? So this is the kind of e-content that's related to my suggestion with the no reference case. Right? U is the notion guiding Bab's use of phosphorus. W is the network in which U is embedded. X is the origin of W. V is the notion guiding Bab's use of Hesperus. Y is the network in which V is embedded. Z is the origin of Y. X is Z. Okay. So the idea is we abstract away and we quantify her over the notions themselves. And so, in a sense, the cognitive significance comes down to the fact that they are the same notion of the same thing. Right? But you don't know that when you start. But it seems to me that if we want to get at the, at the significance of what Bab says when Bab says Hesperus is phosphorus, this isn't the most intuitive way to go. Right? A much more obvious way to go right, is to talk about 
the linguistic conventions associated with the names. And indeed, that is the more traditional way of going, right? So it seems as if what you want to say, and I use, the terminology I'm using is just from reference and reflexivity, something like this, there's a W, X, Y, and Z, such that W is the network that supports the convention exploited by Bab subutterance of Hesperus, and X is the origin of W. Y is the network that supports Bab's use of phosphorus, says the origin of Y, and X is Z. Okay. The point is that this, I mean, I, it seems to me you're getting at essentially the same point, but this version of the E content doesn't invoke notions at all, right? It just invokes conventions for names, publicly available conventions for names. And this, I mean, this has been indeed what the kind of thing John has appealed to in the past to explain these kinds of cases. But it isn't the kind of thing that he's appealing to when he talks about so roles or not. Obviously, the kind of thing he's appealing to when he talks about so roles um, in the current project. So this is just my way of getting at, in essence, the same set of options or same pair of alternatives that Eros was talking about. Right? You can think of name notion networks or simply name networks as networks of co reference of elsewhere called this is a name-centric approach. Or you can think of them as networks of information flow between notions. Right? And indeed, in the paper, and this, I think that, as I say, that John is leaning toward the infocentric notional, but he does say things that appeal to both ways of thinking. So when he says, my use of Aristotle, when I use the name to refer to the philosopher, is associated with an idea or notion of him, et cetera, et cetera. And I use Aristotle as a way of thinking. Right, so both of them are there, okay, as Eros pointed out. Um, and I'll just give a different example of Eros. Eros uses Claire with the hand of poker. But a different example in which these two can clearly come apart is the Marco Polo case, quite famously um, from Gareth Evans. Marco Polo learns the name Madagascar from his native guide. Right? This is not true, but let's use it anyway. Okay. And mistakenly applies it to the island. Okay. So suppose that Marco Polo explores the island, builds up a rich mental file on it, later meets up with the guide and says, Madagascar was as interesting as you said. Okay. Now, it looks as if, I mean, I would definitely say that Marco's notion is of the island, right? It's a dominant source of information in the file. He knows almost nothing about the African coast, let's suppose. Okay. But in using Madagascar, he clearly intends to co-refer with his guide. Okay. But he can't fulfill both of these intentions. Right? There's no way. And it looks like, I mean, it looks to me as if reference is indeterminate in this case. So, I, whereas if you buy into Evans' way of thinking, right, there can be some indeterminacy, but he's going to lean toward the idea in any case that it's going to be the information that, that determines the reference. But it doesn't seem to me that that's obvious. So the question then is whether reference is determined by these kinds of the intentions to use names in a co-referential way, or by the intention to talk about what you have in mind in your mental file. Okay. So the question in the current framework is whether the right INIS conditions are the ones that include conditions on the notions, right? and the notions as embedded in networks, or the ones that include conditions on the conventions or the names, okay, which just aren't the same conditions, and they can come apart. Now, as I say, I suspect, at least this is where I am right now in my thinking about this, that reference is just indeterminate when these come apart. Right? So someone like Evans is wrong to say, let's go only in, eventually in one direction. Right? So the INIS condition should include both. But it's not entirely clear how they fit together. Right? I mean, Eros is very optimistic about how John's, John's account solved this problem, but I would like to know more about how John's account solves the problem. And I'll just say something quickly, anticipating what's going to be discussed tomorrow. Because um, I kind of felt, now I don't feel as bad, but I felt bad about just talking about names and not talking about elusive self-knowledge at all, <laughs> um, which sounded much more interesting. Um, 
But to say, when we use terms like I and John Perry, right, if I, John were to say, I am John Perry, what have you, it seems as if I may function perhaps in a certain kind of special way because of my relationship to myself, but the use of the name looks like it's just about co-reference, right? It doesn't look as if these are operating in some sense in John's mouth in the same way, and in that sentence you get both aspects, right? The I is directed by, the, it, it seems to me, directed by the notion and the John Perry is directed by public language considerations. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.